pseudoscientist immunity to criticism. They never address criticisms. They know that to do so would create a debate in which they would have to actually put up or shut up. Uh, identify this object. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a link at the end here. Now we'll do this one. Robert Temple put out a book in the 70s about uh, the Dogon and Sirius and a bunch of other things. And he used this diagram. And that says the that literally just says the orbit of Sirius B. Where did he get the diagram from? This is the diagram that was used, and um, that's actually from another archaeologist or, or cultural person uh, studying them. It's a figure of the Dogon, think of as a cosmic egg in the birth of the universe. It's part of their how they teach uh, everybody about their about their beliefs. That's literally it. So this is what was handed to this pseudoscientist who wanted to be p famous. And this is Robert Temple's way of messing with it. That's Sirius, and that's the orbit of Sirius B. And you will see people post that image everywhere. It's become symbolic. I'm sure somebody's got a tattoo of it. Maybe someone else you know, would have a Slayer tattoo to compensate. Next. There is no next. Um, this is the Skeptic Dictionary. There's a couple of hundred websites you can find about it, but I love the lament here. Years after this book had been found to be completely wrong, again because the Dogon tribe itself contradicted the idiot, he didn't address any of the criticism, and he put out the uh, next, next book called The Serious Mystery. Now, this was posted in uh, 2013, and progress has been just as slow. I like what he said here is that someone went to the trouble of creating hundreds of Internet sites in various languages to make sure the word got out. You know, that truther thing of, you know, truth bombing, and we call it search engine optimization these days. So let's review. This is Canis Major uh, Dwarf Galaxy has something to do with it. This is what was put in a book regarding the Dogon. This is what the person was handed and turned into some other meme or myth. And this is the Skeptic's Dictionary and a bunch of places like this. You can find out information if you want to about these subjects. About people appropriating cultures and misusing them and lying about them. I mean... Really. Anyway, you can learn about this all you want to, or you can choose not to. Uh, most of you don't care about this. It's not a big subject. But a lot of you out there really get angry when someone points out that you've been lied to, it's been proven, and they just keep doing it. So, uh, what's important to you? Facts? Comfort. Here's an uncomfortable fact. The person who put out the book in the 70s and then, then the follow-up book just kept posting bullcrap and kept hoping nobody would notice it. And people like me who post, you know, any video that even mentions the subject, a, a real snap to response comes up, and someone has to fix that, including denying these pieces of information. This is actually one of many links that was in the previous video on the subject. So uh, let's repeat: the author of this meme lied, got caught, ignored it, and kept trundling on and on. The the problem that people have if they're debunkers or skeptics or rationalists is they believe that lying charlatans that are making money or making power or making fame or gaining a cult following would ever give a damn even for two seconds to ever acknowledge that they've been proven wrong. They don't do that. That's a tactically stupid thing to do. So they don't. And yeah, they do have hundreds of followers hoping to get a little bit of the trickle-down economics of it, even if it's just cultural power. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.